Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's go funny lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. And today I'm going to be reacting to Prophet Muhammad copied from so many sources to produce the Quran. Muslims are delusional. Mm, without wasting time, let's get into the video. The New Testament had not yet been translated into Arabic at the time of Muhammad's life and would not be for another 200 years. He may have may have heard someone giving oral. Well, it, the, the, the fact of the matter is the, the Quran thinks that non-canonical scriptures are a part of what Christians believe. And what Uman is to Mindunilla, call whoever you want, whoever you're capable of, other than Allah. In fact, if in fact you're telling the truth, if you really can, go ahead. And this challenge, you know. There, it's, it's, it's so impossible to meet this challenge for so many reasons. Linguistics is just one of them. The Qur'an is talking about history that the Arabs had never even heard of. Western academics that try to prove that the Qur'an is made up. They say the Prophet borrowed stories from the Bible. Then he borrowed stories from Greek history. Then he borrowed stories from Abyssinia. Then he borrowed stories from here. Then there. Then there. Then there. And by the time they're done telling you how many places he borrowed from, you're like, how much did the Prophet travel? And how many universities did he get a degree from that he found these like hidden archives of obscure texts that have these parallels to the Qur'an that he went and dug into their books and said, ah, I'll borrow this part over here and that part over there and that part over there. The fact that you're finding parallels in the Qur'an to so many variations of worldwide literature in itself is an indication that this is from Allah. In and of itself, like this can't be from a man in the desert, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who has access to the best of the knowledge of the time, the best of the knowledge of the time. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in Mecca. For example, when Surah Yusuf was revealed, the twelfth surah of the Quran, Surah Yusuf, he's still where? In Mecca. He's not in. He's not in contact with the Jewish community at all. The Jewish community is where? The, a faction of them in Medina. And Rasulullah is given the entire Surah Yusuf, and Surah Yusuf has such elaborate detail of the life of Yusuf, who is an important figure in Jewish tradition. That's in Jewish tradition. And the Quran comes and corrects a lot of the, the contradictions and the errors that were introduced into the biblical version of the story of, Jew, of, of Yusuf, السلام, and he corrects them in the, in, in the Quran. Subhanallah. And that's not even when the Jews were around. And the Arabs are listening to Yusuf and they're like, who's this Yusuf guy? We never heard of him. So much of the Qur'an talking about Musa alayhi salam, while the Prophet is in no contact with Jews. In, in, in Surah Taha is Makki. Surah Al-Qasas is Makki. You would think all the ayat, all the references to the Jewish tradition should only come up when the Prophet is where? In Medina and he's dealing with them. But no, subhanAllah. So by the time the Prophet ﷺ comes to Medina, he's already challenging them with what they have. I was sitting with a rabbi not too long ago, it's a couple of years now, and I was telling him, so tell me about Moses, tell me the story as you know it. Because four out of the five books of the, Hebrew, of the Hebrew Bible are dedicated to the life of Musa. It's a huge seerah with them. Like the amount they have on Musa is tr tremendous. So how does revelation begin for him? Well, he was traveling and he saw a fire. I was like, was he alone? No, he was with a sheep. I was like, no, he wasn't with a sheep, he was with his family. What are you talking about? You know, Then I realized, why did they put sheep there? Why didn't they put his family there? Because his family was from Madian. He married where? In Madian. And Madian is Arab. And his family is Arab. And his children are of, of an Arab mother. And to the Arab, to the Jews, ethnicity comes from the mother. So if they accept this, then the children of Musa alayhi salam are what? Of Arab. That, that's a problem. So he was with a sheep. <laughs> let's just, that's way better, you know, and then he went and he got revelation, subhanAllah.
The New Testament had not yet been translated into Arabic at the time of Muhammad's life and would not be for another 200 years. If Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was lettered when the angel came to him with a parchment, according to one narration, and he said, Iqra, we forget to quote the remaining sentence. His answer was, Ma ana biqari. I can't read. I am not learned. Ma ana biqari in Arabic is lastu qari'an. I am not learned. His answer was, Ma ana biqari. I can't read. I am not learned. But here's the icing on the cake. وما كنت تتلو من قبله من كتاب ولا تخطه بيمينك إذا لرتاب المبطلون. It says addressing Prophet Muhammad in public and the unbelievers heard it and never objected and said this is not accurate. It says you Muhammad never read a book before it that's before the revelation of the Quran or wrote it with your hand. Then those promoters of falsehood would have reason to doubt. أم حسبت أن أصحاب الكهف والرقيم كانوا من آياتنا عجبا إذ أوى الفتية إلى الكهف فقالوا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا فضربنا على آذانهم في الكهف سنين عددا There is no dispute among scholars, Muslims or non-Muslims, that the age of the Prophet was the epic of eloquency of the Arabic language. It was their basic profession. And that's why Allah challenged them with the Quran. Just as he challenged the Egyptian with their magical power with the, with the work of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. Every Prophet has a miracle that's suited to his time. This was the top of eloquence of the Arabic language. They prided themselves of being so eloquent. They prided themselves on being the masters and literally knowledgeable people about the Arabic language. And here is a man who was not known to read or write, who comes up with something like that, that has really amazed them and stunned them. But the question at the end of the day is, how is it possible that a forgery, which for centuries the Christian world was alleging that the Quran is, how is it possible that a forgery can be far better than the original? <laughs> ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون. A very interesting video. I'm trying to. I mean, the thing with um, debates or arguments is that there's always two sides. One side is going to say this, they'll have that proof. The other side will say this and they'll have their own proof. Are people honestly mad that uh, what's in the Bible is in the Quran? If anything, people should be happy. 
that's why we have uh what's his name dr zaki naik saying that they follow jesus ways that proudly follow in that why can't uh, and whatever jesus said is also in the bible that's always made reference to and they have no problem with that why is it that others have to feel like ah because it's in the quran then they copied us they're not original um for that i don't know people are complicated some things are just too small of an issue of a thing to be an issue that they don't make sense at the end of the day we all get inspiration from somewhere no matter what we all get inspiration from somewhere remember your mother told you to do this and that even if you didn't want to at that time maybe that was stuck in your head and you ended up doing it like your mother advised maybe you're writing something but you know this and this will rhyme so and you've heard it somewhere and you use it just the way it was used different words you rearrange the words that happens even when you're writing academic works you take someone's work and try to make it your own that's what i'm saying this is an, an issue for me because if someone is going to say then the quran is a, a is an extension of the bible so what's wrong read it don't just be someone quick to put down the other book because you don't believe believe in it just read it see how things are presented there see how lies of prophets are presented in the quran or the bible go back and forth and see which one you think um you're thinking i don't even know because most of the stories are same most of them are same maybe minor details are changed here and there but it doesn't mean the way any of them present it is wrong the way the bible presents something is wrong or the way the quran presents it is is wrong you have to really learn how to appreciate information that's put out there while one may be limited another may have more information on a topic do you understand and that's something we should be happy about otherwise let me know what you guys think did the quran copy was is the quran just a copy or what do you think uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.